So we're back at stage six blackouts again, 10 hours plus without power a day. And it's clear our power reserves are really very low. Winter only starts officially actually next month. There are very real fears that we will be subjected to even longer hours without power as demand peaks in the coldest months. At the same time, South Africa has to make the transition from a coal-dependent country to one that depends more on greener forms of energy. Today, the Presidential Climate Commission presented its recommendations and assessment on that transition plan. I'm joined now by Dr. Crispin Olver, Executive Director of the Presidential Climate Commission. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. So last November, President unveiled this five-year Just Energy Transition Investment Plan. You've been assessing that plan, but also crucially speaking to the many different groups who are going to be impacted uh, by that Just Energy Transition. What are their major concerns? Uh, evening, Sally, and uh, uh, thank you for having me on the show. So just to say, we, we are an independent, multi-stakeholder body set up by the president uh, just over two years ago. Uh, in November last year, as you said, he, he presented this just energy transition investment plan. It's uh, fairly ambitious. It's an amount of one and a half trillion rands that we need to invest in electricity and the electricity reforms, electric vehicles and green hydrogen. And uh, the president asked the commission to consult with stakeholders on the plan and to come back with recommendations. So we've talked to organized labor, all the major unions, organized business, all the business federations, Black Business Council, BUSA, civil society, young people, church groups, uh, local authorities, and we've done a string of community consultations around the country. And, you know, the one thing that's very obvious is that there's a lot of anxiety about this transition, particularly from labor. And workers and communities are really at risk. I mean, they're at risk if we move too fast and shut down you know, the coal value chain and other fuel sectors, fossil fuel sectors. They're also at risk if we move too slowly. We've got a lot of trade exposed sectors. I mean, for instance, uh, in, in auto manufacturing, two thirds of our automobiles are exported and two thirds of those go to Europe. By 2035, Europe's gonna stop importing the internal combustion engine. It'll be banned completely in Europe. So as South Africa, we've got a transition. And if we transition too slowly, we're going to put all of those trade exposed sectors at risk as well. Hmm. So, the, the, you know, the key thing is to find a pace that maximizes for uh, human development outcomes, for jobs, for livelihoods, um, that doesn't hold us hostage to one economic sector like the coal value chain. Um, but rather optimizes for jobs right across the economy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, the other message we got very clearly, I mean, you know, civil society is uh, deeply worried about the uh, environmental and health consequences of the existing fossil fuel dependence that we have. And they presented uh, some really alarming statistics about the number of people that are dying from uh, air pollution, in, particularly in, in Mpumalanga. And I, I was there last week consulting with the province and community. I mean, it, 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 it's a toxic air combination uh, with, with the, the sort of particulate and sulfur dioxide and nitrous oxide emissions in the atmosphere. So, yeah, they're, they're very real consequences that we do have to address. Yeah, and, and sometimes they seem to compete with each other. But, I mean, you know, the job anxiety is a very real one in a country such as ours. Yeah. Um, the health issue, yeah. absolutely, often underplayed, but so important. Uh, and that speaks to the dirty energy problem that we have. And also being able to have viable exports uh, <laughs> when our major um, countries we export to say, sorry, we don't want those vehicles um, anymore. Talk to me about your assessment of the plan and whether it's on point or whether it's actually missing the mark. What are your recommendations? So, look, first of all, um, we, we broadly think this plan 
is important and government should proceed with doing it. It's, you know, there, there, there were diverse views. Some unions, for instance, thought the plan should be rejected outright. Uh, we think on balance, it's a really important intervention and it's worth, you know, marshalling South African society sure. behind the plan. Um, we do think the plan under-emphasizes uh, the justice elements of the transition. And, you know, just to note, we're, we're in the middle of a global economic transition. It's akin to the Industrial Revolution. It's going to have major impacts on some sectors. Some sectors are going to grow dramatically. I mean, yeah. minerals for the future, green economy, green hydrogen, batteries, renewable energy, electrolyzers. Uh, all of these are going to expand massively as we move forward. But there are sectors that are going to, you know, basically shut down over a So, so let me let me period. just jump in. Sorry, we are tight on time and ask you a specific question. Has enough been done? Is there enough in this plan and enough time uh, to deal with the anxiety that jobs are going to be lost and not replaced by good jobs in a new, greener system? There, there needs to be more emphasis in the plan on skills development. The allocation there is puny. Uh, it needs to be increased substantially. There needs to be provisions put in uh, for worker protection. We need to put a lot more into economic, into enterprise development and economic diversification and growing up these new industrial sectors. Okay. It's not just going to happen by chance. You need to proactively do it. Yeah. I, I want to ask you about the big debate at the moment. And, and this is ultimately, I suppose, the bigger question is, do our energy transition goals and aspirations clash with our energy needs in the short term? We're sitting on stage six. Uh, the electricity minister says, look, let's keep those old, dirty coal-fired power stations going, limping along even longer than we planned just to get some power. The yeah. fear is that if we do that, uh, obviously not only bad for the environment, but to put that aside for a second, could we risk any of the investment, any of the pledges that we're going to get to make this transition? transition possible, could our exporters risk any extra tax when they try and export because we've missed our own deadlines? Well, you know, th there's an interesting confluence between dealing with our short-term energy crisis and dealing with our long-term energy transition needs. Uh, we've looked long and hard at the different technologies. and. The cheapest technologies to bring onto the grid and the fastest to bring onto the grid are renewable energy and battery storage combined with some peaking support, for instance, gas-fired power plants. So we're, we're recommending an energy mix by 2030. We think you need an additional 50 to 60 gigawatts of renewable energy. We think you need to co-locate battery storage where, where, where um, those renewable energy facilities are built. And, and we need about three to five gigawatts of, of yeah. peaking power, uh, probably gas. But are we going to risk our investments and our pledges that, that are going to be provided for this transition if we keep those, powered, those stations open longer than we have committed to closing them? Um, look, it's very hard to decommission in the middle of a power crisis. And I think extending the life of some of the coal-fired plants that are at the end of the life by a couple of years is neither here nor there. Um, uh, the real issue is that those plants are now uneconomic to run. Mm. It's costing ESCOM uh, more, more to run them than it's making back in revenue. And it's, you know, you can't do it forever. So, you know, as, as those plants reach the end of their ec economic life, broadly, you know, we don't have to quibble over the exact year, uh, but they do need to eventually come off the grid. Um, these grand plans for a massive expansion in coal-fired power stations, uh, I mean, to be honest, it's pie in the sky. I don't think anyone's going to fund it. Um, uh, it's certainly not the least cost solution for South Africa at the moment.
Thank you so much. Really do appreciate your time this evening, Dr. Crispian Olver, Executive Director of the Presidential Climate Commission. He says, a couple of years here or there to keep those old stations limping along to give us a little bit of power, yes, not a big deal, but absolutely no to any massive coal expansion plans. And uh, that's where we'll leave.